Welcome back. We're in conversation with our guest editor, Madhu Kela, who's a seasoned investor with more than three decades of experience. And the big call that he's making on the markets now is on betting on the financial space. So that's his high conviction call. So to take this discussion forward and to understand where the industry is headed, we're now joined by L.V. Prabhakar, the managing director and the chief executive officer at Canara Bank. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Prabhakar, for joining in. This is Reema here. Just 10 minutes back, uh, you know, Madhu was telling us about how the PSU banks are over-provided now. Uh, could you give us a sense, at Canara Bank, what is the excess provision if you are carrying? And loan growth was a bit subdued for you in the prior quarter. Do you see that cycle turning? Uh, as far as Canara Bank is concerned, our fundamentals, we want to be very strong as far as our fundamentals are concerned. And we want to be future ready. Because of which we have taken our PCR from 70% to 85% in the last two years. Why I'm telling 85% is tomorrow if there is any issue, any recession or any COVID wave, whatever may be, but Kendra Bank will be in a position to take care of all those things and to grow further. And uh, we feel that providing 85% is always good since we have a lot of money. Rakar, Madhu is uh, also if I us. can uh, chip in, sir, first of all, uh, uh, good morning and good to have you here. Uh, uh, I must admit publicly that I'm a big fan of yours and uh, I think the splendid work which you have done in Canada Bank in the last two, three years, I have witnessed it personally. So congratulations to you and the entire team. Sir, you know, we just get into now nitty gritties. So I was, as I was saying that in the last eight years, you made total provision of 1.2 lakh crores, which is roughly 20% of our overall book, right? How much of this is already being recovered, the provision which you make? And over the next three years, out of this book, how much you think you will be able to recover more? I know you have a guidance for this year of 15, 16,000 crore rupees of recovery. So, uh, but if I just extend it, and we are not going to hold you, this is not a guidance, this just basically for discussion purpose, we will not hold you for this. So, uh, what kind of recovery do you expect out of the old legacy book, if I may call it, out of this 1.2 lakh crores in the next three years? Yeah, uh, let me explain in this way. When, I, when we discuss about uh, the legacy book of uh, Kendra Bank as far as NPA is concerned, there are three, four components in this one. One is where we have written off. Second one is where we have provided fully, but they are in my books. And uh, the other one is uh, where we have provided even though it is not required. For example, where we have to provide 15%, we have provided 100%. Where we have to provide 15%, we have provided 75% proactively. Since beginning, we are telling that Kendra Bank is focusing on recovery in return of accounts, which will directly take us to the profit. The other point is recovery in other sticky accounts also. So our estimation is that our recovery quarter on quarter basis should be more and attractive as far as recovery in return of accounts is concerned. That is where we generally do about 700 crores to 800 crores every quarter under the return of accounts. And going forward, it will improve. And regarding the accounts where we have fully provided but not written off, in that also we are very active and we always say that our recoveries will be more than the slippages in every quarter. So that is the guidance which we have given. And with that, as I said in the beginning of the financial year, that 15,000 crores recovery will be minimum. It will be more. So that is the guidance. And uh, this actually helping us uh, the bottom line in a very strong way. Over the next three years, this 15, 16,000 crore of recovery, which we are guided for 2022-23, can we expect a similar trend uh, over the next three years of recovery? Uh, Yes, sure. Of recovery? Sure. Because uh, uh, why I am giving this guidance is, if you see our absolute terms gross NPA, it is coming down quarter on quarter basis because recovery is more apart from addition of the new NPS. But uh, unless until we increase the recovery from 15,000 crores to 16, 17, 18, 20,000 crores, we will not be bringing down our gross NPA to less than 4%, 3%. Our guidance is going forward, I think, uh, over a period of three years, our uh, net in, uh, gross NPA should be less than 3%.
if we just put the number in context, mm -hmm. that he is saying roughly 50,000 crore rupees of recovery is possible over the next three years. Okay. Mm -hmm. We'll come back to this point. Mm -hmm. Sir, again, I know that you have been extremely conservative in the past and you have beaten your own guidance. So if we look at the credit cost, last year you guided for 2%, 2.1% credit cost and you actually achieved 1.5% uh, in FY22. Now, again, you're guiding for 1.4%. If I go back and just do the number, 8 lakh crore rupees in the book, 1.4%, which will mean roughly 12,000 crore rupees of incremental provision is what you are uh, wanting to do. Can you just run us through that, you know, obviously, as far as I know, a lot of the sticky bad accounts are over. So where is this credit cost coming from, uh, coming from this 12,000 crore rupees of provision? How much of it is be because of the aging provision? And how much could be because of the new provisions which you have to make, uh, which is the current book provision? Uh, you have rightly said 1.4% is the credit cost guidance which we have given. That is on a higher side. We always give a guidance and we beat our guidance. So the credit cost will be less than 1.4 going forward and this financial year also. So exact figures I will not be in a position to reveal. However, as a guidance I can say that uh, we will not be crossing 1.4% credit cost and it will be well below that one. This much I can say at this point of time. Are you seeing early signs of credit growth picking up? And again, I don't want to ask you about quarter. Over the next two, three years, what kind of credit growth you think is sustainable? Uh, see, let me uh, uh, mention here the amalgamation of Canara Bank and Syndicate Bank two years ago. I can say that is the uh, turning point for Canara Bank. There are a lot of synergies because of the amalgamation of a Syndicate Bank and Canara Bank. And we said that last year our credit growth will be about 7.5%, but actually it was 9.77%. This time, Canara Bank is seeing very good growth as far as credit is concerned in all sectors, in RAM, in corporate, and I can say that it is a decent double-digit growth. And this is possible because, not because of one-day efforts, the efforts and the verticalization which we have started in the last two years, and uh, the concept of inclusive involvement and inclusive development by my staff members. Now each and every branch, each and every staff member is contributing to the growth because of which in the last two, three days we could uh, tell to the public that even in the gold loans we crossed one trillion outstanding, which is a very good portfolio with no capital cost, with good returns, with good uh, commission, everything. So same way RAM sector, very good growth we are seeing, especially corporate. All corporates now they are interested to bank with Canara Bank on a win-win situation and we are also seeing very good traction as far as uh, corporate credit growth is concerned. So going forward we see minimum double digit growth in RAM sector that is retail, agriculture, MSME, corporate. And in uh, even under overseas business the growth is very attractive two digit figure. So Kenra Bank I think as far as uh, credit is concerned it is well placed and going forward it can sustain it because now each and every corporate in India would like to bank and we also like to bank with them on a win-win situation. So as per my numbers sir, uh, you will be able to achieve a minimum 15% plus ROE in the next 12-18 months. Am I too optimistic or pessimistic? Already we are at 13% as on March and uh, my guidance is 15% by March 2023. Uh, regarding Canara Bank, as I said, we are achieving all these parameters based on one principle that is inclusive involvement and inclusive growth. It is not that the bank is showing good performance because of MD or EDs or GMs. It is because of each and every can write 87,000 people who are working in the field. Each and every one is contributing. And if you see, we have created verticals for corporate credit, mid-corporate credit, MSME, agri, retail, housing. And housing, last year we have already said that we are growing uh, at an attractive uh, speed and it continues. 
And even gold loan vertical, I think uh, you should uh, appreciate that uh, Kenra Bank crossing one trillion mark with a vertical, and gold loan cannot be done by a one individual, it has to be done by the many people. So in Kenra Bank, the growth which is visible is not because of one person or two persons, it is because of the involvement of 87,000 people in Kenra Bank. And uh, whether MD is there or not, Kenra Bank will grow and continues to grow because of the contribution of each and every Kenrite. So much, sir. As a shareholder, we'll, we, uh, we are extremely happy with the work which you have done and I will certainly miss you <laughs> Okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> as the chairman. Mr. Thank you so much. Mr. Rubaka, thanks a lot for taking time out for us, joining us. Uh, Madhu, uh, that was a fantastic discussion, I, I must say. Clearly, I know the bad cycle of provisions, the bad cycle of NPA, hmm. which lasted for eight years and there were challenges like, you know, the biggest challenge which we could not touch was technologically, a hmm. lot of these banks faced a lot of threat from this fintech. And generally in that kind of scenario, there is a de-rating which happens in the sector. But RBI has closed even that window. You hmm. saw the circular which came from RBI. So I think I am fairly optimistic okay. that this credit cycle will improve from here. Bank consolidation has happened. There are fewer banks. So over a period of time, they might be able to Got command it. pricing power. And their hmm. ROEs, once they go to 15% plus ROE, I don't think these banks can trade at 0.3.4. Got the point. Got the point. That's the bullish argument. You know, my job is to temper optimism. Absolutely. So <laughs> Fantastic. So yeah. what is the risk factor? Because at the end of the day, I agree that, you know, over the last two, three years, uh, there's been some signs of outperformance. But if you look at a 15-year period, uh, they have been, you know, dogs of a stock, right? I mean, they've just done nothing. Um, no, banks except, have not except been for SBI. I'm, I'm talking about the PSU. No, I'm the, again, we are not talking about PSU or private sector. Yeah. I am making a case for financial as a whole. Okay. Now, you choose your pick. Yeah. You know, you don't like PSU bank, you don't buy okay, so buy then, something else. Yes, but <laughs> your, your big call is... My over. big call is on the financials as a whole. Hmm. It is not restricted to PSU banks or private sector bank. My big call is the financial sector. No, no, got it. Just last word, at the end of the day, what's the risk factor to watch out for? And not just for banks, but, but the market point. The point risk factor is the overall economy. You know, if, hmm. if we actually, India actually slips into recession, you know, hmm. if geopolitically something really absurd happens, which we are not able to comprehend today, hmm. then all of these arguments hmm. uh, obviously will have to change. And we are you and I are watching that uh, closely and I will come back again and tell you that these things are going wrong and so we need to watch for okay, it. Okay. Banks Absolutely. are seen as a barometer <laughs> of the Indian economy. So in a way they looked upon as a macro indicator yeah. and that perhaps explains why they've underperformed in the last 15 years as well because India didn't do so mm. well from 2010 to 2020. Uh, thanks a lot for watching and of course uh, up next, the market programming continues on CNBC TV 18.